So let's get started. Let's talk a little bit about what is Zapier. Now, Zapier is a third-party platform that allows different apps or tools to connect with one another. And the way it does it is through a principle of triggers and actions. What this means is that when something occurs in one tool, it acts as a trigger and it causes an action in another tool. So let's say something happens in ActiTime. This causes another event to happen in another platform and therefore we build an integration and an automation between the trigger and the action. Now each app that is supported on Xavier uh, has its own list of triggers and actions available and what we do ultimately is we match these triggers and actions from one app to another in order to create our integration and our automation. So let's take a look at the kind of tools that are available. So Zapier has at this point already over 4,000 tools that are available. Um, you can check out the full list of these tools on the Zapier website. We've included a link in the presentation here, so you can check it out later for yourself. Uh, for our purposes here, we're just going to introduce you to some of the main categories and some of the main um, tools, at least the popular ones that are available. Um, so we have categories like the calendar with calendars like uh, Google Calendar, Outlook Calendar, Calendly. We have communication apps, which are also email uh, apps, chat such as Slack. We have HR tools such as Bamboo HR, Workable, Recruitee, so I know a lot of you use those uh, alongside ActiTime. There is also categories covering accounting, which I know is a popular one because a lot of you use uh, your ActiTime data later on for payroll purposes or billing purposes, so those connections are available as well. Uh, there is the segment of IT and web development. For those of you who are in that industry, you'll recognize tools like GitHub, GitLab, and Jira software. Of course, I know, uh, I know that many of you use uh, additional project management tools. So while there are some project management features in ActiTime, I know for many of you, you also have a reliable project management tool. So again, those are presented in Zapier as well. So you'll be able to make connections between them and ActiTime. And also sales and customer support. So for those of you who have sales and customer support departments in your team, you're likely using a CRM or maybe a ticketing platform. So those are presented on Zapier as well. So as you can see, uh, the tools available on Zapier, they cover, cover a wide range of uh, different industries and also different lines of work. So you can really find pretty much anything to fit into your workflow and help automate it and help you ultimately save some time. So for some of the most popular scenarios, for your convenience, our team has prepared uh, templates for these integrations. Now, Zapier is a very easy to use platform, so it doesn't require any advanced IT knowledge or skills in order to be able to use it. Uh, but what these templates do is they make it even easier. So a lot of the fields are pre-filled out for you. Um, so again, the integration will be that much easier for you to use. A full list of these templates is available, again, with a link that we included in our presentation and we will send your way. And we'll also introduce you to where these can be found a little bit later on. Now, let's take a look at uh, some of the most popular or at least some popular scenarios just to get a better feel for what can Zapier do for integrating ActiTime with other tools. Now, the first integration scenario here uh, is an integration between ActiTime and Slack. Now, for those of you who are in the IT industry, this is a very popular tool and you will definitely recognize it. For those of you who aren't familiar with it, uh, Slack is a, a place of communication and chat and information exchange predominantly used in the IT uh, sphere. And the main purpose of this integration is that when a new task appears, so our trigger here is a new task appearing in ActiTime, time and what this does is it causes an action of a message being sent in a channel in Slack. So for those of you who are maybe missing that functionality, who are missing those notifications, you want your team to be notified when a new task appears in a project. This is a really neat uh, integration that's available with the help of Zapier. The next scenario here is an integration between ActiTime and uh, an HR tool called Bamboo HR. And the main takeaway here is that the trigger in this case is a new user being created in ActiTime, and this results in a new uh, employee being created in um, a tool such as Bamboo HR. 
The next scenario here is a scenario between JIRA and ACTI time. Now, in this case, uh, the trigger is not in ACTI time, but in another platform. So in JIRA, again, another popular IT platform. So in this case, when a new issue is created in JIRA, this automatically creates a new task in ACTI time. So for those of you who work in external platforms where you have certain tasks or certain issues and you're managing them there, and you just want them to be, appear in Acti time so that users can track time for them easily, find the task that they're looking for, avoid manual task creation. This is a really neat integration for uh, those purposes. So again, new issue is created in Jira. It automatically creates a new task in Acti time that users can track their time against. The next scenario here is an integration between Acti time and Office 365. And this is, again, a very interesting one, especially for those of you who use the approval uh, functionality in ActiTime. So I know from speaking to many of you that it has been requested or there has been interest in being notified when a timesheet is ready for approval. So when users indicate that the timesheet is ready for approval, you want to be notified. And this integration would allow you to do that. So again, the trigger here is the change of status of a timesheet. So the timesheet becomes ready for approval and what this does is it causes an action of an email being sent from your office 365 account notifying that this has occurred so the timesheet is now ready for approval all right and the last here in our list and certainly not least is the integration between google calendar and act time now, this is a really uh, exciting one, I think. Um, what it will allow you to do is to track an event, the duration of an event in your Google Calendar into your ActiTime time track, your timesheet. So the way it works is the trigger action here is an event ending in Google Calendar. And the action is this duration being automatically tracked in a task of your choosing in ActiTime. So for those of you who have ongoing meetings and you need this time to be tracked, you don't want to have to worry about inputting it manually. This is a really interesting one. And this is the one we decided to walk you through today and to show you uh, for an example on how Zapier can be used. So let's step outside of our presentation here and head over to our ActiTime account to access Zapier. So Zapier can be accessed from your ActiTime account the same way uh, that you access other possible integrations and this would be under the puzzle piece icon at the top right corner. So if we click here we'll see that amongst our other integrations we have a field called integrations via Zapier. So what you do is you click on make a zap. Now what this does is it takes us to ActiTimes page on the Zapier website. So here you see ActiTime icon and a search field. What the search field allows us to do is to search for one of the 4,000 apps available on Zapier in order to set up these zaps or in other words, rules for automations to be made. Now, if we scroll down a little bit further, we'll notice that there is a section called popular ways to use ActiTime workflows. Now, these are the templates that I mentioned a little bit earlier. So these are the templates for popular scenarios that our team has prepared for your convenience that you can use in order to easily connect the tools in line with the mentioned scenarios. And we're going to go through one of these scenarios together. And this is the first one here. So creating a timesheet entry in ActiTime when a Google Calendar event ends. So we're going to click on try it. What it's going to do is it's going to take us to a page that will outline what the process entails. The process is fairly easy. So the first step here is connect your, to your apps, connect your apps. The second step here is setting up your zap. Zap in this case again is the rule for automation. So where we outline our trigger in action. And the third step is turning on your zap to make sure that this rule begins an automation. So let's click and let's get started. So initially it will prompt us to connect to our Google Calendar. For my purposes here, I'm already connected to my Google Calendar, but when you will initially get started, you will just have to click, click on connect a new account. You will have an account to choose from, from the Google Calendar, and you just simply select it uh, like you would normally when you choose your a Google, when you tie your Google account to something. Once you select your Google account, you go to next.
The next step here is going to ask us to choose our calendar. For my purposes here, I'm going to choose this one here. So the Zapier, uh, this one, the Zapier test account that I've prepared, and I'm going to go to next. The next step is a very interesting and important one. So in this case, this is where we indicate the, the name and the type of calendar event that we want to be triggered with this automation. So for my purposes here, I want all events in my calendar that are entitled internal meeting to automatically be tracked to my timesheet. So here I'm going to write internal meeting in order for the system to detect calendar events with this name and track it. And now I'm going to go to next. All right, the next step here is connecting our ActiTime account uh, to this automation. Now, again, for my purposes, my ActiTime accounts are here. I'm just going to select the correct one. For uh, you initially, when you get started, you're going to have to connect your ActiTime account. And this is very easy to do. You simply need to enter your ActiTime URL, which uh, is the URL that you use to access your ActiTime account. So again, it'll be HTTPS and then online.actitime.com and then slash the unique word for your company. So. Then you just input your username and your password that you use to access ActiTime and voila, just like that, your ActiTime account is connected. So I'm going to choose one of the ones I have here and go to next. All right, the next step is prompting me to choose which user I want these time entries to be affected for which user. Now, as a manager in ActiTime, I have access to a series of uh, other users. And theoretically, I could associate the duration of a calendar event to one of their timesheets so that they update one of their time entries. But for my purposes here, I just want to, this time to be added to my timesheet. So I'm going to select myself here and go to next. All right, the next step is gonna ask us to select the fields we want to be affected by this um, integration. So some of them have been pre-filled for you, such as day, task, time, these are mandatory. And some others you can choose to add. Now, in case the task name itself appears in several projects or customers in your team, uh, you may want to narrow it down and indicate a task in which project or client you are referring to. So for these purposes, in order to narrow down and specify the task that we want to be included in this integration, we're just going to select customer and project as just additional fields for our purposes here. And also, maybe I want some additional information to appear in the time track comment. So not only the duration of time, but maybe I want some additional information in the time track comment. So I'm going to select this field as well and go to next. All right, now we're prompted to map the fields that are required. So we have our date, which is today, the date that we want to start this automation. I'm going to choose the customer. So my customer is our company. I'm going to choose the project for which uh, I want to track this time. The project is called management in my case. And then I'm going to select the task. So my task is going to be called meetings. That's the task where I want these time entries to go. All right. Then, as you see here, uh, there is a list. So you can select the duration in minutes. It will be pre-filled for you. So we're going to have duration in minutes, so that's how I want the time to be entered. And then for the time track record comment, I can choose one of the available ones here. So I can either choose the description of the event to be added to the time entry, the location, the creator, when the event ends. So there's a series of different fields of information that I can choose to be included in the time track comment here. So let's say in my case, I want to include the description. Okay, and now I'm just going to go to next. All right, so now what Zapier is asking me to do is it's prompting me to test out uh, this particular Zap to make sure that everything is configured properly and working as needed. So I'm going to click on send test. 
Now it has indicated that I can check my ActiTime account to view it. So let's head over to our ActiTime account to see if the test has gone through. So here I am in my ActiTime account. I have our company, the project is management, and the task is meetings. So let's look at the track time here. And there it is. There is my name. There is the date for today. There is the 40 minutes that was our test uh, version. And the comment is the subject of the calendar event. Okay, so let's take a look at also what this looks like in the timesheet. So if I head over to the time track, I will notice that the time entry is there and the relevant comment dragged on from the calendar event is also there. Okay, so we check that everything looks well. And what we can do now is just click on next. Review our zap. So again, when a new event in Google Calendar ends, time will be added in my timesheet in ActiTime. Everything looks good, it's what I want, and I click on turn on zap. Now the page is going to load while the zap is being turned on. And we're going to get a confirmation of our zap. There we go. So our zap is now on. Now let's just take a look again at what this looks like in our account in Zapier. So let's click on manage your zap. And what we're going to be taken to is the page of our profile on Zapier, where we can take a look at our the information available here. If we have over to zaps we can see the zaps that we currently have so each zap is ultimately a trigger and action rule that we have created to make connections between two accounts so the first one here is the zap that we just created together uh, so called create time sheet entries in active time when new google calendar events end you see that the zap is turned on that means that anytime an internal meeting will come up in my google calendar the time and the duration of that event will be tracked for my tasks called my task called meetings if i don't want to use the zap anymore i can switch it off or delete it if needed Okay, so as you can see, you really don't have to be an IT specialist to make this kind of connection with the help of Zapier, and that's one of the great things about this kind of integration. Now, uh, a little, a few words about Zapier as a service. So all of the scenarios that I just went over and that were mentioned, including the Google Calendar and ActiTime scenario, are available as part of Zapier's free plan and free account. Um, now, they do, of course, have a paid option that expands the capabilities of integrations available. Uh, and what this means is if you have uh, integration requests that are a little bit more complicated, maybe you want more than just one trigger in action, you want more than one tool involved, so just a more complex sort of integration. And also, if you want to use one of the platforms that Zapier on their list deems as uh, premium, accounts, then you will have to go for a paid account of uh, Zapier. It starts at about, uh, it starts at $20 a month. Um, but again, quite a lot of the scenarios and the ones that we just mentioned are covered in their free accounts. So there's a lot you can do even with the free account without having to uh, go for the paid one.